I have heard the rumors and stories of Bigfoot. My cousin's mom claims to have been attacked at her childhood home in Florida in the 80s. So I always thought they were stories just to get a scare out of people. I never knew of a cryptid called Dogman. I saw werewolf movies and monster movies and thought they were just fiction, not roaming the wilderness for people to have run-ins with them. I have lived in South Dakota my whole life, by a small town called Witten. It has a small creek that runs right beside it, and my friends and I always used to play in it day or night. But on July 11th or 12th, I was on my way back from a job called Custom Haying, where you cut rake and bale prairie grass or alfalfa for ranchers for their cattle to feed them when grass isn't plentiful during the winter months. I got home early in the morning between 1 and 2 a.m. I got out of my pickup and walked into the yard to my, at the time, two-year-old German Shepherd pup. He was excited to see me, and I was playing around in the yard with him before I took him inside for the night, and I figured I would have another cigarette before going in also. All of a sudden, my pup started looking down the road and was looking at something. I didn't give it any thought because we have deer, raccoons and critters that come into town since the creek isn't that far away. When his hair stood up on his neck and back and started to growl softly, I was kind of on alert. We have coyotes in the area and with the rare sightings of mountain lions every now and then. So, I figured it could be one of those. I started looking down the road and didn't see anything at first, until I saw an ear flick in the shadows of a tree a block away. I strained my eyes a little harder and I saw a real as you and me creature standing in the shadows of a tall cedar tree. I couldn't move. I thought it was a trick of the light. I tried rationalizing something, but then it blinked and an ear flicked again. I was looking at a movie monster. I slowly reached down and grabbed my pup by the collar and unhooked his leash. We slowly backed towards the house until we were out of sight from it and I rushed into the house. I locked my doors, drew the shades on my sliding door, checked windows to make sure they were locked, went up into my second story and looked out the window that was facing the direction we saw it. It was still standing there, and it snapped its head up to the window I was looking out of. I went and grabbed my rifle out of my closet and went back upstairs and stayed there until the next morning. I went outside after the sun was well up in the sky, and it measured to my best estimate around 6 foot 8 inches. It had a grayish colored fur. I would think it must have been an older one for gray hair. Or at least, that's what I could think. I could only describe it as looking like the dog soldier's werewolf, not so much for a mane of fur around the neck and no tips of hair on the tips of the ears. But that is the most descript on how it visually looked. I have gotten the feeling of being watched from the creek since that night for the years that I lived there. My sister has said she has had weird feelings from time to time. And I can't say if it's that creature or something else. I never doubt stories from people that have heard strange things or have had actual sightings. There are dogmen in South Dakota, and I don't really know if I want to have another sighting. Back in the winter of 2001, my youngest son and I were on our way from Boise, Idaho to Medford, Oregon. We had taken a car trailer to his old place in Boise in order to haul his non-running Jeep to his new place in Medford. We hit an area of heavy snow in the Southern Cascades around 2 a.m. It took 45 minutes or so to get down the mountain and we had, of course, been drinking coffee to stay alert. About 25 miles west of the pass, it became obvious that the last few quarts of coffee had to be drained. We stopped at a wide spot in the road, near a summer tourist house that was deserted during winter months. There was a gas station and ice cream joint on the west side of the road that was closed this time of year, and no town or settlement within 30 miles. Now, 
This was tall timber country and unsettled. Across the road was a small parking area for the ice cream joint. It was paved and about 200 feet wide and 80 feet deep. I pulled in and as I stepped out the truck with a 45 on my hip, it occurred to me in a flash that grabbing the 590 Mossy would be a good idea in the middle of nowhere. As we walked to the far end of the area to be well off the road, the hair on my arms and the back of my neck stood on end. The area directly to our front was open with a depth of 50 yards and a width of 100 yards. The night was clear and cold with 8 to 10 inches of snow on the ground and a moon almost full, so we could see quite well. While standing and taking a leak with my son, about 15 feet to my right, I saw something springing from the earth in front of us across the open area. Ten or twelve creatures moving rapidly back and forth in sort of a thatch weave pattern. Now, these things were not human men. These things had to be close to seven feet tall. They were thin, bipedal with long arms, with medium length gray fur, and damned fast on their feet. I brought the shotgun up and slid the safety off as my son was drawing his 45. I don't know if I can adequately explain the overwhelming feeling of menace, but here it goes. I had been operating on pure instinct since I stepped off the pickup truck. The rotten feeling hit me a split second before the things arrived in front of us. The feeling or instinct was that we were prey and subject to a very bad, gruesome death and to be slaughtered and eaten. Not a logical process, but gut feeling and massively overwhelming. As they were moving around in front of us, more appeared and mixed among them, all the while running about really fast in front of us. My son and I were backing up toward the truck. I would not present my back to them. Some of them peeled off right and left in an encirclement movement. They were rolling in fast from the sides now, so I could smell and feel their presence. We got to the truck, loaded on adrenaline and ready to kill, as we both knew we were in grave danger. We piled into the truck and locked the doors. I had the keys out and ready as my butt neared the seat. I had the engine lit and the trans in gear, gas pedal mashed in one motion. Adrenaline is great stuff. As we fled, something very close to our truck let out a ululating scream of rage and pain. I believe one or more of the group had gotten really close to us in their pursuit, and I ran over the foot of one of them. Yeah, they were that close. We rolled onto the highway, and I told my son to watch the bed of the pickup, as well as the trailer. He was already indexed to the rear with the shotgun ready to blast. We hauled ass for at least 20 miles before the feeling of grave danger started to abate. The feeling that nailed both of us, as we discussed soon afterward, was one of being prey and soon to be slaughtered and eaten. Now, I am not easily led, and I neither believe or disbelieve all the Bigfoot, ghost, and werewolf stuff. In fact, I am skeptical. My son was speaking with a co-worker about six months later, who had grown up in Prospect, Oregon, about 30 miles south of Union Creek, where the incident took place. He asked Jake if he had ever heard of any strange going-ons in that area. Jake went ashy white and pretty much retold the above tale and said to avoid that place at night. A family friend, a 25-year retired cop, who had not given two flights of a fancy and an excellent observer, had a tale very similar from a year before. I told my wife of this event, of course. She looked at me at the beginning, as though I had developed a third eyeball in the center of my forehead that was from shock. She did believe me, but did not wish to hear any details. She said the tale gave her chills. Me, too. As I write this, the hair on the back of my neck and forearms is sticking up. I have not gone back to explore, 
and would not without a large group of shotgun and flamethrower equipped men with me. My son and I are both sane, sober people, and not taken to hysteria. We were wide, very wide awake as things transpired. We saw and smelled what was there. As a sidebar, neither of us heard footfalls from the creatures. They were silent until I hurt one as we were getting the hell out of there. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Descent into the Unknown for more terrifying stories.